Ramen Nation, Chris Cobain here bringing you guys the XRL, the Ramen League, week number six, game of the week. Now, obviously, this match up, this video is late, as is my Pokemon. We've got a busy week this week, so I apologize for that. But uh, we will be, we'll be giving you guys a double header today, uh, where I'll be uploading both game of the week and Pokemon of the week. And then, of course, tomorrow of the day, I'm uploading this on Sunday will be the recap stream for week number seven so if you guys want to check that out do so over at twitch.tv slash x chris cobain starting at one o'clock est every sunday make sure you guys check it out if you get the chance to uh, but this week we have a double repeat performers connor and the miami mimikus on our side make i believe his third game of the week he was uh part of game of the week week one and week two and then slack uh, one of the three undefeated teams uh aka alec is on the opposing side this is his second game of the week this season so both guys have been having phenomenal years and uh, both are now you know uh, both now are in game of the week yet again Connor for his third select for a second so going into this matchup Connor is three and two he's had a lot of tough matchups this season include, including uh, against Reiki who uh, I believe uh, going into this week was second place in the league and uh, Sleck going into this week was number one in the league. So Connor have all sorts of tough matchups. Uh, Sleck is currently sitting at five and zero. As I said, leading the league in the in the uh, leading the entire league. He's got the uh, best record, obviously tied with Carly and uh, Reiki at five and zero, <clears throat> but has the best differential going into this matchup. So is looking to maintain that going in. Both these guys, we already are aware, are great battlers. So we knew going into this one that was going to be. Uh, really good so let's take a look at the team starting off on our side with Connor and the Miami Mimikyu's he's running his ever-present Victini Celebi the debut of Murkrow who he just traded for uh, the week prior uh, I believe he brought it to deal with uh, Slex Ditto uh, to counter a uh, like a, a Ditto that was trying to copy Dragonite or something and sweep like that uh, fortunately, obviously, Select didn't bring it, so. Uh, Corbalion, Dragonite, of course, and Tabu Fini, uh, rounding out his team. Uh, pretty, uh, all the, all the usual suspects aside from the Murkrow here, and Select is rocking the same exact kind of deal. Both these guys have, have a core Pokemon they're very reliant on, but it's working, so how can you complain? On Select side, he's running the all-powerful Lander Asterion, Mega Beedrill, the greatest nickname in all the XRL so far this year, Wanker. Uh, Del I love that name. Um... Rotom Wash, his Sneasel, which may be making his debut, I'm not sure, and uh, Haxorus as well. So obviously, the leads are going to be Victini versus the Landorus. That can go a lot of ways, but if you're on select side, it's got to be something you're wary of. You got to be, you got to be switching out there uh, because otherwise, you're uh, risking uh, the potential use of Scarf Glaciate because Victini gets every move that's ever existed apparently. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. This is another. Phenomenal matchup, and again, it features someone from the Red Division, who, uh, the Red Division was on a few week hiatus there. They're making their comeback here, so. Uh, Slack leads off with his boy Dad, that's gonna be the Landorus T, obviously one of the greatest OU Pokemon of all time. And out comes Victini, one of my most hated Pokemon of all time. I hate this thing, but it's so good, you can't deny its power. The Intimidate comes through, which may or may not matter, and then obviously Lander's going to switch directly out automatically, as I said, does not want to fear, or does not, is fearing that Scarf Glacier potential, so he will go into uh, uh, Rotom Wash just to predict Glaciate. Uh, Connor does go right for the U-turn, though, instead, uh, maybe Prediction, uh, Select can't be aware yet, and we'll be switching into Time On, which, oh, by the way, these nicknames are glorious. Uh, Celebi comes in, easy switch in, and forces Rotom back out, so... Uh, Rotom will be switching up into Wanker, as I said, best nickname in the league. Uh, but Selby's going to go ahead and go for U-turn here. So Connor, early off, has all the momentum here. Not doing a lot of damage, but he's putting pressure on Select's team very fast. Uh, so he's able to switch into Scales on, which is Dragonite. Another of these names just make me laugh, dude. Uh, this time, Wanker's going to stay here, and Connor's going to reveal the fly. So very interesting that he's not running maybe a Z-Fly set here. He's just going right off with the fly. Uh, and that's especially interesting because he knows that Slek is very prone to bring this, Rotom Wash. So he knows that uh, this this is pretty much always a guaranteed switch on that fly. So, But it does do decent damage, about 25%. No leftovers on the Rotom as well, so you got to be fearing something like Choice uh, Scarf with Trip. Uh, he'll be switching back up into Celebi. Uh, here as the Rotom will go ahead and click Volt Switch. And that's going to give Slek his first use of Momentum of the match. I actually kind of disagree with that play on Connor's side because the Volt Switch is very, very clear there. 
and uh, switching into Celebi, bait it just it just begs for Beedrill to come in, and it's it, you guys know how hard it is to play against Beedrill, uh, especially in this scenario. So um, Celebi goes for the switch out, but Sleck is rocking that pursuit and will click it right now, which is a really really good play. He does lose out on a little bit of momentum potential on the uh, on the use on the lack of using U turn there. But instead, he's going to pick up a solid 50% on the Celebi, meaning next time it comes out, it's dead to a Pursuit, which is very, very good. And out comes Pranks on, which is going to be the Prankster Murkrow, of course. Uh, Beatrice going to go ahead and go for that U-turn. As I said, this was built to uh, handle maybe like a Dragon Dance uh, Ditto, uh, copying Dragonite. So it doesn't even take 50% for that U-turn, which is super good. And uh, we'll be clicking the Nightshade on the switch into the Sneasel. So that'll do a quick 50 damage. Looks about a 3 hit KO, maybe a 4 hit, uh, depending on obviously its health. Uh, Murkrow will switch out, not want to take the ice attacks, and will switch into Suicide on, because Suicide leads. Yes, very good, as the uh, Weavile goes, or the Sneasel, excuse me, goes right for the Icicle Crash, which obviously is very, very little to any variant of Kabalion, less than 25% there, and Sneasel's now forced out. Um, easy switch in now for uh, Sleck here. Uh, he's gonna go into Dad. I was super praying for Hidden Power Ice right here on stream. I remember yelling, "Please click Hidden Power Ice." Easy bait. Uh, he does go to work for the Swords Dance instead, so he will be plus one after the Intimidate, obviously. Uh, but he's got to fear that Choice Scarf, and here's the one big misplay of the game. I felt um, he stays in on the Scarf and dies. So uh, I don't. He's checking for Scarf there, whatever. Uh, there's a there's a positive side to this, and that is what he's about to do, and that gives him an automatic switch into Dragonite. He now is aware that this is a Scarf variant of Landers, and he knows that he'll die there, but he does get an automatic switch into this Dragonite, which is nice. The only problem is, he has to work past this Rotom, obviously. But he does auto-switch out, predicting that, and switch back into Time On, so a solid prediction on his part there. Does allow him to potentially click a healing uh, move if he has it to get that health back up to better take on uh, Beedrill later, or just go right up for the attack. And Slack's gonna stay in predicting the U-turn and not get it. Uh, so Kano's gonna go right aggressive for the Leaf Storm, hit the Rotom, take him down, and all of a sudden Dragonite is huge now. All of a sudden Dragonite, all it takes is one Earthquake from the Landorus and Dragonite can potentially start sweeping. Uh, instantly, so. In comes Fing Fang Foom, which is going to be your boy Haxorus. <clears throat> and of course, Selby is at minus two right now, so that's very, very scary. Um, Selby's going to U turn out, of course. Revealing that it is a fast set in case that wasn't clear already. He does get a crit for what that's worth, does about 30% to the Haxorus, and does allow him a switch into his boy Pranks on, which is the Murkrow, as uh, Hax goes right off of the Dragon Dance, so. All of a sudden now, you've got the ability for this Murkrow to prankster up in any way, shape, or form it would like to. Uh, it will go ahead and go for the Feather Dance, which is really cool. Prankster Feather Dance meaning it's going to lower Haxorus's attack by two stages, putting it at minus one instead of plus one, which is super nice. Uh, Dragon Claw is going to come through, and it's going to pick up the kill on a crit that does matter. Remember that Beedrill did less than 50% with U-Turn at neutral, so a minus one Hax Dragon Claw is not picking up the kill there. The, the, uh, the crit matters a lot, and honestly, that's a huge blow to Connor's team because of how, how useful that Murkrow could have been later in the game. So out comes Feeny, the minus one hacks are going to switch out into Wanker, uh, giving Tempo Feeny a pretty free turn here, a pretty obviously free turn. He will go ahead and click the Nature's Madness to get 50% on anything that comes in pretty much, and uh, Wanker will be taking that 48-ish percent or so uh, after he's taken that health, or that hit I should say. Uh, Moonblast is going to come through from the side of the Tempo Fini. Does very, very little to the clearly Assault Vested variant of, uh, of Delmise here. It does go for the Shadow Claw, predicting the Selby to come out. Does not get it. But that's a very risky play on Connor's side. Does work out. He does get a little bit of chip damage, which is really nice for fighting this Delmise. And now, status off, the uh, Tempo Fini will be switching out into victory to eat up the very, very, very obvious uh, uh, Power Whip. Select will make the play here though and switch out. Uh, he goes, does go into Beedrill, but again, he has to be fearing this Choice Scarf Victini, which he very obviously will do. He'll switch right back out into the Delmise as an instant fodder switch as the Victini goes for Psychic and picks up the kill. So, uh, both guys playing very, very aggressively right here. Uh, a lot of switching, but a lot of just straight up power attacks coming through. 
Uh, out comes Dad, which is going to be the Landorus. Obviously, Victini will not be able to one-tap that with Psychic under any circumstance. Um, so, obviously, we'll be forced to switch out right now. Unless it's not choice, but he knows the uh, Landorus is, so of course. Uh, switches back into his Tapu Fiend, or excuse me, his, uh, ex I said Tapu Fiend, in uh, into his Celebi here. As the Scarf will go for Stone Edge, um, is able to pick up the kill in two shots, which is very, very impressive. And uh, very noteworthy. Uh, the mist will go away for what that's worth because Connor will be switching right out into Tapafini now. Uh, now that he knows the Earthquake isn't coming through and doing massive damage, he knows he's able to switch into Tapafini for very minimal damage. We all know how bulky Tapafini is. Especially when it's not a stab attack coming through. So He's going to get a second straight stone edge. He's going to come through and do a little bit of damage. Obviously, chip damage on Fini is always very, very nice. It has one main weakness taking chip damage like that, but uh, is able to force Landorus out with relative ease now. So Select's going to take the switch out. He's going to switch into Was Pop and very, very, uh, very risky play in all, all things considered. But um, it does work out in his favor. Uh, the, the Nature's Matter is going to come through with 50%. That's a, it's a very aggressive, uh, a very risky, and a very, very good switch in all things considered. He can't get burnt by Skull. He knows no fairy attacks doing anything. So he gets he gets for that 50% chip damage. He gets Beedrill in and is able to kill Tapafini, which is huge. So very, very aggressive, but very, very... Good switching on select side there, switching to be drawn the Feeny. Obviously, Connor cannot afford to switch out and take a poison dab on anything. So, he will switch into Victini now and hit up that Searing Shot, which is going to go ahead and pick up the kill on Beedrill, revealing that Choice Scar finally. Um, he hadn't revealed it yet. And uh, Beedrill will go down, which is a huge play for Connor. And now back out comes Haxorus, the Fing Fang, the Fin Fang Foon. And uh, obviously, the Victini being locked into Searing Shot makes it very, very bad matchup for Victini. But Connor opts to stay in here. So uh, here comes the Searing Shot. It's going to do a little over 25% because that's how powerful Victini is. Of course, uh, Haxorus not all that bulky. As uh, he will go for the Dragon Dance. Obviously not faster than Victini because Victini is Choice Scarfed at this point in time. As the Mist does go away once and for all. Uh, Connor opts to stay in a second time here and go for another Searing Shot. Which will also not kill. And then uh, the the Haxorus will go for the Earthquake and pick up the kill on the Victini. So I, I view this as a misplay on uh, on Connor's part and actually slightly on um, Select's part as well. We'll explain that going forward after the match is over. Uh, so obviously this is a plus one uh, Haxorus, but obviously Dragonite does carry the extreme speed. So it's an easy switch into Dragonite to pick up that kill with the E-Speed. And uh, revenge kill Haxorus nice and quick. Uh, out comes Kid Flash, which is going to be the Sneasel. Uh, this is a very easy play for Connor. He knows that he doesn't really have to fear the Sneasel all that much. He does eat the Ice Shard, which is very nice. We'll kick in that super powerful um, weakness policy, of course, which will make him plus two. Easy Dragon Dance in the Sneasel's face. Does not have to fear a second use of the Ice Shard because he knows now at plus three. He will easily be one-tapping this with extreme speed. Sneasel not known for its massive bulk, obviously. So down it goes. And this will leave it to a 2v1. The what will be plus two after the uh, Intimidate um, Dragonite again, and his uh, low HP Selby against what is we know is a Scarf Landers. Uh, Connor is forced to go for E-Speed because he's only plus one, meaning he is not faster than this Scarf um, set. Stone Edge will come through after the 50% damage, a little over 50%, and pick up the kill on Dragonite, leaving this to a 1v1. Celebi versus Landorus. Uh, can Landorus hit? Can Celebi live? Can Celebi kill? Very, very, a lot of things can happen here. Uh, Landorus will go for Stone Edge for the fourth time, pick up his fourth straight hit, and pick up the kill on Celebi, leaving this to a very slim 1-0 in favor of Slick with only his Landorus alive. A really good game. Um, obviously, uh, there was there was a little bit of misplays on, on both sides. I felt like uh, the big one, and um, we talk, I, I talked about it with Connor after we watched the match. I think his biggest misplay was letting uh, Victini die at the end there. Uh, I feel like if he sacks Celebi instead of sacking instead of sacking off the uh, the Victini there, uh, then he's able to switch in on Dragonite, who will still be able to pick up the kill with Extreme Speed. On the uh, on the hacks, even without that second searing shot, I believe it would pick up the kill. 
Um, and the, the, the game would go forward exactly the same, except at the end, after Dragonite loses uh, to Landorus after the 1E speed, he, uh, Connor will be able to switch into the Scar Victini, which is obviously faster than Landorus, and pick up the kill with Glaciate, uh, as I assume he had, or even Searing Shell would have picked up at that point, no problem. But uh, Slack could have played it differently, even in that scenario. So it wouldn't necessarily have, have uh, automatically let Connor win the game, but it would have been a way to play it, a different way to play it anyway. Um, Select does walk away 6-0 with the 1-0 victory. Four Stone Edge hits. He needed those last two to win in the game. In fact, he needed all but one of them. The only one that didn't matter was the one on Feeny. He needed the first one on Celebi as well, because if the first one on Celebi had missed, well, then it wouldn't have died to one anyway uh, when it came in the next time. So he got very... Very fortunate, I won't say lucky, but very fortunate that he was able to land the Stone Edges he needed. Game would play, it's a risk, man. But the Stone Edges pay off, uh, does hit all four of them, and three very crucial ones and uh, to allow Select to remain undefeated for the time being uh, and rise to 6-0. and Connor drops a 3-3 at 500, but he's had a phenomenal year so far. Being 500 with the, with the schedule he's had so far is nothing to be ashamed of, and I definitely expect him to... Uh, to bring the bring home the wins in the second half of the season uh for sure so good game to both involved you both deserve game of the week very enjoyable match um well played guys so obviously that's the end of this one um later today on the day this is uploaded obviously we'll be uploading pokemon of the week for week six as well there's a very very cool pokemon at number one on that so make sure you guys don't miss that said at the beginning but i will say it again if you want to check out all the matches as they happen make sure you guys check me out on twitch at twitch.tv slash x chris the link in the description below we start every sunday at one o'clock on the recap streams to watch all the matches from each week all 10 of them that happen each week so that's your best it's pretty much your only place unless you watch the vod to uh to check all the matches out and see everything that happens so thank you all for watching i appreciate it. i'll see you all later today for pokemon of the week you guys enjoy the rest of the day I'll talk to you next time, all right? All right, peace, Rome Nation. See you.